Hello and welcome back to Let's Play The Dig, with me, Mr. Muck Luckable. In the last episode, well, we activated the inventor's machine, this thing right here, this big bolt of energy, which has opened the eye and opened the portal to Space Time 6, where the uh, native aliens currently are trapped as kind of weird forms that can't really do anything. Um, sadly, in the process, well, Brinks died again, and also, as she went to turn it on, Maggie has also died. <sighs> poor old, poor old Robin's down there. Now, the question is, did she know she was going to die? Because we asked her, before she did this, we asked her, you know, is this going to kill you? And she said she doesn't know. Was that a lie? Did she know it was going to kill her? Did she sacrifice herself for us? Ah, <sighs> Well... We do have an option right now, like I said last episode, this is the point in the game where you can alter the ending very slightly, oh so very slightly. Um, we can go back to get some life crystals and bring her back to life, like we did with Brink. Only problem is, we did promise her before she died that we wouldn't do that. She doesn't want that, she wants to die with dignity, she doesn't want to turn into what Brink turned into. So. I think we're gonna we're gonna leave her. We're not gonna bring her back to life. We'll do as she wants. Well, she wanted. <laughs> She's dead now. And uh, we'll leave her be. I will show the alternate ending though. I think after the game is finished, I'll go back and show you what the second ending is like. But yes. Oh, Maggie. It is kind of sad, but at the same time, we didn't really get on very well. But then it is kind of. If she did see, if she did know that was going to kill her, then that's a very brave thing to do of her. Especially how much she wanted to go home. Alright, well here we are at the top. Let's head towards the eye and go save the chicken aliens. So if we go to the light bridge. I should have known the inventor would have one more trick up his sleeve. God damn that inventor. He really doesn't want us turning this on, does he? He's got his own bloody guard dog there. Well, there is one easy fix for this. If we just do uh, this. And do that. That was the inventor's last chance to stop me. I will get out into space time six. I will bring the people of this place back home, and they will build me a starship that will take me back to Earth. Yep, just us as well. Mm. Okay, so if we turn the light bridge back on now, we are now safe to travel. Well, <laughs> safe as as much as you can be safe traveling across light. Uh, we're we're safely free to go and uh, head towards. Here we go. The eye. Oh, let's go. I guess this is the real test. Can a practical guy from Earth do what all the builders of this place failed to do? Can I go into space time six and still find my way back to reality? Only one way to find out. Oh, oh, that's it. It's like a giant crystal ball, marble thing. That right there is the portal to space time six. And I guess all that's left to do is go in. Let's do it. It's beautiful. A guy could get lost here real easy. No. No, I'm not going any farther into this place. I'm staying here where I can get back out again. You are as strong as we hoped, human. I can understand you. In space-time six, all living minds communicate perfectly. You stand at the doorway, human. You show us all the pathway back to life. To reality. To a place where we will someday die, yes. But we will have a life before we die. Every past and future, I can see them all, 
But which one is real? Go back now, human. Take me home. My people have their bodies, their bones, their lives again. We owe you a great debt, Commander Lo. All I want, now that my friends are dead, is to go back to Earth and tell the story of how they died. Why not let them tell their own story? I wish. You knew the way home. But I know all the other paths through time and space. Wait! Don't go back there! I have brought you a gift. Maggie! Brink! You're alive again! We were lost, but this being found us and led us back. Maggie, I thought I'd lost you forever. So you really didn't try to resurrect me with the crystals? No, I... I promised you. And besides, what the crystals bring back from death, it wouldn't have been you. I know, Boston. You kept your word. And yet, you did find a way to bring me back from death. It wasn't me, but I'm glad you're here. And I'm free of the madness of the crystals, too. You did it, Lo. No, it was our friend here. No, the credit belongs to you. We once revered a great inventor because he opened the door to unchanging eternity. But you opened the passageway back into true life. All I am is a guy who wants to get back home. Already my people are preparing a great crystal starship to take you there. But we can come back, can't we? You and any others who wish to come. You are a young people, strong and full of hope and passion. We have much to teach you, and you have much to share with us as well. There will be friendship between our species forever. I hope you're right. Not all human beings are as, uh, nice as us. Oh, I know that. All young species are alike that way. But don't worry. If any of your people try to pick a fight, we'll mash them like bugs. How reassuring. The ship is almost ready. Go home and tell your people what has been accomplished here. Telling the people, that's Maggie's job. And getting us home, that was yours. You did it, Boston. Thank you, Boston. We all thank you, Boston Lowe. And there you go, that was The Dig. Kind of an interesting ending right there. I mean, there's a lot you could you could ask about. I mean, why was Brink really old? I don't think that's really explained. I think it's just a, a process of bringing him back aged him. I don't know. Maybe it was the effect of the crystals. But uh, yeah, we did it. We are, we are on our way back the same way we went there, in a giant crystal ball. But um, yeah, I, I guess... I guess that Space Time 6, in a way, is the afterlife. If if that's where Maggie and, and Brink were, that means that's where all the aliens were. They all died, in a way, which is kind of odd when you think about it. But, uh, hey, they have the power to bring them back, and not by the means of the creepy life crystals either. So all is saved. Ah, <sighs> And you know what? I think I think that is a really, it's a really good game. Um, 
it's it's a different game, a very different game to anything I've played in the past. Especially in terms of point and clicks, it's got a much more serious tone. I mean, there are jokes in there, <laughs> like <laughs> the aliens squishing us into bugs right at the end, which is a bit concerning. But uh, yeah, aside from the few jokes, it it does have a more serious theme to it, and that's probably evident from. Uh, where Steven Spielberg wanted this to be a, a TV show and then a film and then it made its way into a game so I really liked it it's not perfect by any means I think some of the dialogue is a bit cheesy and a little bit hammed up the way it's said but and also the puzzles can be a little bit yeah but I think overall it does a really good job of, of sending you to that alien planet that alien atmosphere with the fantastic fantastic visuals I love the backgrounds of this game and all the vistas and panoramas beautiful stuff the music I've spoken about before just uh, the the lovely tones and synths and what you're hearing right now it's so it's very subtle but it's just it's great it really does make you feel like you're in space now I'll be honest when I first saw this game I imagined more of it would be in space you know, we, we started off in space, we started off with the um, the asteroid, and uh, I really did think more of it would be space themed, but I'm, I'm still pleased with where it went to the alien planet, I still think it turned out very well, and I think the whole let's play turned out rather well, I really am um, pleased that I played it through first, and that it wasn't blind, because I think this would have went terribly if I played it blind, <laughs> I really do, and you know what I'm most surprised about, I'm really surprised that you guys like this let's play as much I was really a bit unsure how this would this would go because it's it's a point and click and also it's not really it's not all about the humor like Monkey Island so I thought it would be a little bit um, well not too well received but but to my surprise um, pleasantly surprised as well you guys really seem to like the story and the characters and uh, the, the, the environment which is great uh, I definitely think I'll be doing um, more point and clicks obviously probably I want to go back to uh, Monkey Island yeah before any other ones I think I need to just see where Monkey Island goes with that storyline but um, LucasArts also did another slightly more serious point and click I think it was called Loom maybe that's worth a try one day and maybe we should go to a completely different company and not do a LucasArts point and click at some point these, uh, these credits are a bit funny, what's that? Monkey the Incredibly Lonely Drooling Cat. Lovely. But because this part is still very short, uh, and I think it's probably uh, due that I um, show the alternate ending of this game, where we do in fact save Maggie using a life crystal. And I'll just show you, I won't show you all of it, because some of it is the same as what we've just seen there. But I'll show you a part of it that is different. And I also want to show you just to end off this let's play, a few of the uh, Easter, Easter eggs and uh, just little little hidden things um, in the game. There we go, the end. That's perfect timing right there. So I'll show you the alternate ending and some uh, Easter eggs and special features. Okay, so here we are back at the inventor's machine with uh, Maggie, sadly deceased, right there. And what I'm going to go do is grab a life crystal from uh, the machine that Brink obsessed about back at the uh, the tomb spire. And we'll come back and we will revive Maggie and see how the ending of the game is oh so slightly different. Okay, so I'm back and I now have a few extra life crystals with me. So... Let's do what we said we wouldn't do, and bring Maggie back to life.
Okay, well, there you go. She just couldn't bear the thought of being brought back to life and being anything like Brink, so she jumped off a cliff. <laughs> and now and now Lowe's just left to stare stare into where she fell. Yeah, and that's not quite how it differs. Um if we now go poor old poor old Maggie. Um, if we now go and bring the people back, the aliens back, that cutscene also slightly differs, so I'll skip to when the change occurs. We owe you a great debt, Commander Lo. All I want, now that my friends are dead, is to go back to Earth and tell the story of how they died. Why not let them tell their own story? I wish. You knew the way home, but I know all the other paths through time and space. Wait! Don't go back there! I have brought you a gift. Maggie! Frank! You're alive again! We were lost, but this being found us and led us back. Maggie! When you died, I... Man, I'm glad to see you. I don't know if I'm glad to see you, Boston. You broke your promise to me. I'm sorry. I just didn't want to go on without you. But you knew that what the crystals bring back isn't life. It wasn't me. But it's you now. Yes. Well, yes, it is. And I'm free of the madness of the crystals, too. You did it, Lo. No, it was our friend here. No, the credit belongs to you. We once revered a great inventor because he opened the door to unchanging eternity. But you... So, yes, that's, that's about the change, really. It's just that Maggie is not too pleased to see us when we bring her back to life. Well, when the alien brings her back to life because we kind of went against our promise to her. But, like I say, it's a very, very small change. It doesn't really affect the game too much. And it comes right at the end of the game as well. But it's kind of nice in a way, but I, I don't know. It, it it could be more, I suppose. It could be more, but I thought I'd show you it anyway, just to show you all the uh, endings of this game. And yeah, to end off this Let's Play, let's have a quick look at some of the Easter eggs and little little special features, little bonus things you can do in the game. Okay, so here we are back in the tomb with Maggie and crazy old Brink over there. And uh, something you can do with the controls is if you press Control B, <laughs> you uh, you get a little bit of a, a little gun show from uh, from Low. Let's do it again. This is really bad timing, Boston. <laughs> and at the same time, you get some dialogue from the characters. You wish. Although for some reason, it's I think that's um. That's not Maggie's voice. That's the voice of the other woman, on the uh, on the penultimate. Huh? That's odd. Anything else? We're responsible adults. <laughs> One more go. One more go. You want the truth, Boston? Can I handle the truth? You wish. All right, yeah. I said one more go, and I still did it. But yeah, there's one thing you can do. That's Control B. Get a little bit of a flex from low. Uh, let's head to the um, let's head back to the Nexus and I'll show you one other thing you can do with the keyboard controls. Okay, so here we are. We're heading into the control room. This is after you come out of the long dark tunnel in the Nexus. Because if you go in here, and hopefully this will work, um, we go in here, we're going to type out almost like a secret code, and it should make Brink do something. Let's have a look. If we head towards the window, and we type in the word swans. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would hmm as well if I've just saw a clone of myself swim <laughs> on the other side of the window. But yep, for some reason swans causes a, a, a clone to swim and... Uh, you get a nice, a nice view of low 
in action underwater. I don't know. That's that's a really, really random thing. Let's do it again. Damn it. Maybe you can only do it once. Well, there you go. Uh, now, let's head back to the... Hmm. There's a few other things we can do. Let's head to the uh, light bridges because there's something quite cool that I've been missing the whole way through the game on the um, light bridge panels. So here we are at the light bridges with all of the spires accessible and if we go, I think we're currently at the tomb one, if we go um, and have a look at the strange device right here all along there have been um, easter eggs in the form of these doodles here they may look like random doodles but in fact they contain little hidden pictures very basic pictures very simple pictures of Star Wars themed things because obviously LucasArts Lucasfilm Star Wars uh, for example in this one right here that thing there is a TIE fighter on its side you see there's a center and there's the wings uh, you could also what could else could be on here um, not much not they don't all have a lot so there's a TIE fighter for sure I might be missing something else but that's that's pretty obvious and then if we go to another one very quickly let's go to the map spire I think they all have something on I hope they do this one for example has ooh, maybe maybe I'm wrong maybe they don't all have something but they do have some oh that thing right there looks a bit like a Death Star with the line and that could be where the the laser shoots out of I might be pushing it a bit but I think that's a Death Star <laughs> there is a really obvious one though if we keep going round so that was the map let's go to the museum have a look at the panel. I can't open. Oh no, sorry, not the panel. The strange device. So ha, huh, here we go. This one. That's obviously a star destroyer right there. And what's right next to it? Oh, it's the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> that's pretty obvious. Look, that's definitely the Falcon. That's great. I love that. And there's the uh, star destroyer right next to it. And then if we go to the planetarium. What does this one have? Mmm. Mmm. I can't really make anything out of that. Maybe you can. I'm not a massive Star Wars nerd, so <laughs> I do have to, you have to kind of squint your eyes a bit as well. This has got to be something though, isn't it? What is this? Yoda. No, I don't know. Uh, but the last one, which is the cathedral one, this has. Oh, that's definitely that's a Death Star. That's that's a bigger version of the Death Star. But this is R2D2 on his side. Look, the little top bit. I think that's maybe one of his little legs. Maybe, maybe. Well, anyway, that's definitely R2D2. It's a shame. There's maybe there's R, uh, maybe there's C3PO somewhere as well. But yes, there you go. There's some Star Wars Easter eggs. And finally, finally, if we examine our penultimate. This is my penultimate personal digital assistant. Yep. It's my penultimate. Yep. It's my personal digital assistant. Yep. It's my penultimate. Mm hmm. It's my penultimate. Mm hmm. It's my penultimate. It's the T1000 model. There we go. T1000, remember how I mentioned the voice actor for Low is Robert Patrick, who was in Terminator 2 playing as a T1000. Ta da! And there you go, that is going to be it for just a little, you know, a few little extra things that I missed during the playthrough, which are quite cool just to look at. Um, but that will do it for this Let's Play. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have enjoyed playing this a lot. It's always nice to kind of go back and play these old types of games um, that you may miss otherwise. So I hope you've enjoyed watching it. And uh, until next time, until the next Let's Play, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.